The Estonian government has already held discussions and debates regarding the possible scenario of sending their military on non-combat missions to Western Ukraine. This information was officially confirmed by the head of the Ministry of Defense of Estonia, Hanno Pevkur, according to Polish radio. He also emphasized that no one has made a final decision yet, as the country's authorities are very concerned about the safety of their instructors in Ukraine, which is constantly under attack from Russia. If we had a large contingent, say a bridge-sized unit with equipment, it would be a very big target for the Russians. Hanno Pevkur noted. The head of the Defense Department also reminded once again that the decision to introduce troops to Ukraine should be made by consensus of NATO member states. In addition, official Tallinn wants to take into account absolutely all nuances. First of all, it is about force protection measures as well as logistics. Therefore, we are currently continuing our studies in Poland and Great Britain. Let's see how this topic will develop. Hanno Pevkor said, the catastrophic failure of the Russian Blitzkrieg in Ukraine, which resulted in huge losses for the aggressor in a 30-month meat grinder, convinced other neighbors of the Russian Federation of their ability to resist a possible Russian invasion. This is written by the American magazine The Hill. The publication notes that according to Western estimates, Russia has lost about 200,000 soldiers killed and 400,000 wounded in Ukraine. Losses in the main types of military equipment are also astronomical. This, as well as Ukraine's success in the Black Sea and deep strikes on Russian military facilities and oil refineries, inspired other neighbors of Russia, in particular Estonia. In mid-September, Chief of the General Staff of the Estonian Defense Forces, Major General Vahur Karus, told Estonian media about a change in the country's defense doctrine. In the past, the plan was to hold out for 10 days before the country was occupied by the Russians or saved by reinforcements from NATO allies. Now, the Estonian army has a completely different plan. This is because of the changes that the war in Ukraine has brought to many NATO allies. We can no longer wait to be hit over the head with a sledgehammer, but we have to be the ones who can do certain things first, Karus said. The Hill interprets these words as Estonia's intention to preemptively invade Russia if relations between the two countries reach a boiling point. According to the authors of the publication, if Estonia thinks so, then Latvia, Lithuania, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, and perhaps several other former Soviet republics, feel the same way. The publication notes that the Estonian army, which can deploy 60,000 personnel during a war, is quite capable, with NATO support, of implementing something similar to the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region in the Russian border area. In a word, Putin has brilliantly managed not only to reduce Russia to the level of a second- or third-rate country, but also to surround it with potential enemies, the publication notes. Smoke rose into Beirut's sky after an explosion was heard in the Lebanese capital on Friday. That happened after Israel carried out a series of massive airstrikes overnight in Beirut's southern suburbs and another that cut off the main border crossing between Lebanon and Syria. The blasts in the Beirut suburbs sent huge plumes of smoke and flames into the night sky and shook buildings kilometers away. The Israeli military did not immediately comment on what the intended target was, and there was no information immediately available on casualties. Lebanon state-run National News Agency reported there were more than 10 consecutive airstrikes in the area. The new wave of strikes came after Israel warned people to evacuate communities in southern Lebanon that are outside a United Nations declared buffer zone, as the year-long conflict between Israel and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah escalates. Israel launched a ground incursion into Lebanon on Tuesday and its forces have been clashing with Hezbollah militants in a narrow strip along the border. A series of attacks before the incursion killed some of the group's key members, including longtime leader Hassan Nasrallah.
A few people southern Israel on Thursday were seen near the fragments of an Iranian missile that was intercepted by Israel near Arad. The Middle East moved closer to a long-feared regional war the day after Iran fired a barrage of missiles at Israel and Israel said it began limited ground incursions into Lebanon targeting the Iran-backed Hezbollah militia. Israel said it intercepted many of the missiles, and officials in Washington said U.S. destroyers assisted in Israel's defense. Iran said most of its missiles hit their targets. There were no immediate reports of casualties. On Tuesday night, Iran fired a barrage of missiles at Israel in what it said was a retaliation for attacks that killed leaders of Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Iranian military. It referenced Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah and Revolutionary Guard General Abbas Nilforashin, both killed in an Israeli airstrike last week in Beirut. It also mentioned Ismail Haniya, a top leader in Hamas who was assassinated in Tehran in a suspected Israeli attack in July.